Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a contour 101, how to contour, different products to use. Most of the products that I use in this video are drugstore, so they are very affordable. I am going to cover a bunch of different ways that I contour, and I'm going to try to keep this very short and as less chatty as I can, but there is a lot of information to cover, and I don't want to leave any important pointers out. The first one I'm going to show you is how I do my everyday contour. I have already applied a primer and one thin layer of foundation. I use my Rimmel Stay Matte Primer, which is my favorite, and then I use my Bare Minerals Air Pro Liquid Foundation. I absolutely love this foundation. After I do that thin layer, I will take my NYX concealer and I want to apply this to the highlights of my face. So I'll make a V under my eye, down the bridge of my nose, on the forehead and chin. Shade that in. Then I'll take my damp beauty blender and blend all of that in. After all that is blended out, I obviously need to set it. So recently I've been using the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder in the shade Sandstorm. I will just put this on the areas that I just put the concealer. And I do a light layer. After that, it is time to do the contour. When you're using a contour, make sure that you are using a cool toned shade. These two are my absolute favorite. This is the Bobbi Brown in Natural Run natural one and this is the hula as you can see I've already basically used all of my hula bronzer but it is a very cool toned it will not leave your face looking orange and then this is the Bobbi Brown it's also very cool toned so for today I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown and I'm going to use my Morphe G8 brush and I don't want any of the foundation to slip and slide around my face after I just applied so I'm going to do padding motions to pat it into the face and then I will rub it in. So starting from the top of my ear and I'm going down here and this is where I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna go any further than that. And now I start doing a circle motion up here. That will help blend in the bronzer really well. I know a lot of people have told me before that they can't get their bronzer to blend in it just looks like a splotch of dark and that's not what you want you want it to blend in naturally so make sure that you are putting a, a really small amount of product on your brush before you put it on your face less is more and you can easily pack it on but it's a lot harder to take it off especially after you've already done your concealer and set that and everything else look at the difference do you see how that's thinner and this doesn't have any contour at all. You can easily see the difference. So patting a small amount of product on my brush at first, tap off the excess, and now we're going on to the temples. I'll go in circles right away. And then blend it up over here. If you have acne on your forehead, then don't apply the pressure that I'm applying. I, right now I don't have any acne on my forehead, so if a little bit of the foundation moves around because I'm swirling my brush with a little bit of pressure, then it's okay because it's not, none of my acne bumps are going to come out underneath my foundation because I don't have any. But if you do, then do the same thing that you do on your face. You just want to pat lightly and then just do small, light strokes. That way your acne won't come out on top of the foundation because you want to keep that hidden. After I do my bronzer, I turn my head in a lot of different directions in the mirror to make sure that it's all blended out and you don't see any lines or marks. So that is my everyday contour. Make sure that if you're not blending in your bronzer and it's just kind of sitting there and you see that harsh line, you need to move in circles and you need to blend it up into your hairline. Just blend up all of it. Just like when you're doing your moisturizer and your skincare, you want to move up, not down. Don't drag it down. That's when it gets splotchy. That's when you're pulling your face down. Not good. Always move it up. Now moving on to a heavy contour. So before I do anything, I will do my primer and then I will do a light layer of foundation, like really light layer of foundation because this, when I use cream contour sticks, it really packs on makeup, especially when we're going to put powder over top of it. So you don't want to have a cakey 
base that just won't look good and then I will use these cream contour sticks to really chisel out my face and these are both the Maybelline Fit Me sticks so I will use this exactly where I use the concealer and I will use this where I used the bronzing shade and then after I blend all of that out with a damp beauty blender I will take any kind of translucent powder but this has been my favorite recently it's the Stay Matte Rimmel and I will use a big fat brush this is the It Cosmetics brush like a stipple brush so then I will just dip it in the powder and then dab onto my face because if you start rubbing like this you're moving all of that around and it's all gonna blend in together and you're gonna lose the chiseled look so you need to pat the powder onto your face if you feel like your face gets cakey after you apply a powder maybe you're applying too much and maybe you're putting way too much product on the brush before dabbing it on your face so dab it in there swirl it around tap off the excess and then lightly pat in and just make sure that it looks like there's enough powder to set it so it'll last all day you're not trying to put this whole pan of powder on your face then you're just gonna look crazy after I set my face with that powder then I will go back in with a bronzer pat in like I just showed you I'll do the same exact thing with that bronzer just to deepen that up a little bit more and then of course you highlight and one of my favorites right now that I'm loving is from the Anastasia Glow Kit palette in the shade Summer. That's my favorite right now. That section of the video covers how I do my contour, how I do the easy everyday one, and then how I do the heavier one. Obviously this just adds two extra steps and it just adds more time because you have to blend all that out so your arm gets a workout. So now I am going to cover different products that I use to contour. This is the Coco Contour Palette from Too Faced. It comes with a bunch of different shades. I do like this a lot and it smells delicious. The pop of light I will use to highlight on my cheekbones and down the bridge of my nose and on the cupid's bow. And then this lighter shade in light cocoa that would replace this so instead of having a bunch of different products like I just had that I just showed you you could have it all in one palette which is really nice for like when you're traveling you can just take this instead of taking five million other things with you this cooler tone this is what you will contour with this is what you want to put right here to really chisel your face this will warm up your face. So if I were to use this shade right here, I would use a bronzing brush that kind of has a little bit of a stipple to it. This is the Eco Tools Blending and Bronzing. I really like this brush. So I'll just dab it in lightly, tap off, and then warm up this area right here. And I'll just blend it in. And that adds a warmer look to your face. And then you can drag it up here as well. And you see how I just warmed up my face a little bit more and it doesn't look like too cakey or anything. So this is a very good palette, um, but of course it's like from Sephora and Ulta so it is a little bit pricier. Another palette option is the Smashbox Shape Matters palette. This comes with eyebrows. It comes, it comes with eyebrows. It comes with a brush. These three things you can use for your eyebrows. Then you've got your contour right here. And then you have a bunch of different eyeshadows to use as well. Same exact thing with the Coco palette. I would use these the same exact way. But this just comes with more. I haven't found, besides the NYX bronzer, I haven't found a drugstore bronzer that is super cool toned that I feel like doesn't make me look orange. So these two, I do think it is worth investing in a bronzer. They last a really, really long time. So if you're not gonna go out and buy a palette, then buy a really nice bronzer and then go buy a drugstore, like lighter shade of a powder to set everything with. The NYX, HD finishing powder is good. When I bake, I will use the Sonia Kashuk or the Morphe translucent. This Morphe one will leave a white residue, so like on your face if you do not really brush it, so you really gotta brush it out. This will blend in very well and set the under eye if you want to bake. Another way to warm up the face, if you were not going to buy a palette that already had the warmer shade in it to warm up, you can buy the Milani one. I do like this one a lot. It's the Glow Baked Bronzer in the number four, and it has some shimmer to it. If you don't like shimmer, then I wouldn't recommend it, but I do like this one. 
And then also on the more expensive side, I forgot to mention the Tarte Amazonian Clay Bronzer. If you have oily skin, this would be a really good bronzer for you because it is for oily skin. It, it's like, I think it's waterproof. This will stand up in the heat. So on the really hot summer days where you feel like your face is melting off, this would be a really good bronzer to wear on those extremely hot summer days because it will last. Instead of using the Maybelline contour sticks, cream sticks, you could use two different concealer shades. These are the Morphe concealers. This is in Cinnamon Swirl. I don't know what shade it's in. You can use both of these the same exact way that you would use the cream contour sticks. I think these are cheaper. I think these are a couple dollars cheaper, and I do like these concealers, and th this one smells really good. Also, the LA Pro Conceal, you can also use these. These are definitely the cheapest out of those two, for sure. These are definitely another option. So again, when you are using a bronzer to contour your face, you want to make sure that you are not using a color that is super orange because it's just not going to look the best. You want a cool toned bronzer like the Bobbi Brown, the Hoola, or the cooler toned shades in the Smashbox and the Coco palette. I do want to mention one more time that if you feel like your face looks way too cakey when you do some of these steps, adjust the way that you are putting on the powder on top of your foundation. Do a lighter dab, make sure that you tap off the excess powder before you go put it on your face and see if that makes a difference. Also, don't do 10 layers of foundation and then pack on the powder like you were. That's also going to make it cakey. So you don't have to avoid contouring just because you feel like because you're applying more products to your face that it's going to make your face look extremely cakey and like you're wearing too much makeup. You can contour without looking ridiculous. <laughs> I really hope that this video was helpful. I hope that I answered a lot of questions. I hope that I showed you ways to take care of maybe issues that you run into when you are doing your contour. I know this video was a little chatty, but I didn't want to leave out anything important. There is a lot to say when it comes down to contouring. So I hope that I gave you a bunch of different options to go try if you are in the market for some new products. If this video did help you out, then please help me out by sharing this video, liking it, giving it a thumbs up down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Also, leave in the comments below any other type of video or beauty tricks, tips, questions that you may have. I would absolutely love to answer them, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!